In this example, we're going to take a look at automatic feature recognition. Uh, we'll also put in some additional features, contour or uh, chamfering. So we started off, we have our piece uh, open up, our model open up. Uh, we're going to start off by defining the machine. I'm going to go with millimetric, select, and the tool crib will be tool crib 2, metric, select. Press OK. Next up, we're going to define the coordinate system. Click on coordinate system, user define, and I'm going to press on the uh, this point here. And you can see the z-axis is pointing vertical. If it's not, you can select over here, select an edge, and re reorientate your axis up or down. Okay. Once you're happy with that, accept. Now into Stock Manager. Double click. Editing the stock, and I would like to put two millimeters onto the Z axis, onto the top of the Z. Two. Accept. Now, first of all, I'm going to extract the machinable features. Well, click the Extract Machinable Features, and very cleverly, SolidWorks Cam picks out the pocket and picks out the the holes, the four holes or the group of holes that we have. From there then we can generate a plan and then generate a toolpad. I can simulate the toolpad and press play to step through it. So we see here we're cutting the slot in the center of the piece. At the moment we're going through rough mill one and we're using tool one which is a six millimeter flat end mill. Now we have a roughing operation, rough mill 2. We're still using the... Uh, now we're after changing to the contour mill, with T2, which is a 10 millimeter flat end mill. We're center drilled the holes, and then came with the drill to drill out the, uh, the holes, and they're true holes. If I flick around, you'll see they've come out the far side. So, that was great, very easy to do, but there was a couple of features there that the software didn't pick up. The first feature is facing operation uh, across the face to take that two millimeters uh, from the top of the raw material down to the top of the part. Uh, now to do this, and first of all, when when I started using this software, I was quite confused. When I would, um, let's say, right click in mill part and go to 2.5 axis feature I would get a menu but if I was in this tab here which looked pretty much the same to me when I was starting out with the software and right click on mill part setup and go to 2.5 I had a different uh, set of menus pop up so if I went to face milling here again I got a different different menu um, so just be mindful of which one you're in. You can use both, but the steps are slightly different uh, to get the, the, the same outcome. So I'm going to work here with the SolidWorks Cam feature tree. Right click on Milk Part Setup, add a 2.5 axis feature. The feature type I'm looking for is a face feature. I'm going to press the top face. And I will click on, on the end condition. So when I press on end condition, it's looking for the strategy. Would I like to have this finished to a course, a fine? So I'm going to do a finish um, strategy to finish off the top of the piece. Up to stock. So 
you can see the blue little line here and if I press here to flip it you'll see it will go to down two mil which is the top of the stock if I flip it again it will go down 10 mil which is to the bottom of the stock obviously that would eliminate all of my stock so it's down to two millimeters that I'm looking to go you can also go blind uh, offset or up to a reference plane or whatever all right so two mil that's perfect and accept so now I have it um, here but I, I have yet to generate so I've only def defined the feature but I've yet to generate the operational plan and the tool path so if I right click generate the operational plan and right click generate tool path and I'm just going to simulate that tool path right click and simulate tool path and if I play it you can see the facing operation Perfect. And normally you would do a facing operation before you would start a pocket and the drilling and so on. So to reorder this, I'm just going to press it and drag it back up to the top, just under mill part setup. And now if I simulate, so I right click, simulate tool path. You can see that I face off the top. Then we do a rough pocket. Finish. Center drill and drill. Perfect. Now here you, you notice that there's two little yellow asterisks um, highlighting that there's an issue. So if you just right click and go down to what's wrong, it tells you that the tool selected was not from the tool group. So clearing this error will clear the status of all the oper operation nodes using this tool. So we can add that to the tool group. It's just letting you know that you haven't uh, got it into your, in, in your tool group. now been assigned T13 and T14 so they've been added to the tool crib the tool crib database has been updated a couple of other things um, if we let's say we have a, a rough mill and then we have a, a second rough mill and then a contour mill and it might be beneficial to just have a, um, a single rough milling depending on uh, you know what you're what you're looking for here so we can let's say go to the default feature strategies and where we can see that the the irregular pocket, which is what we're machining here, has a rough rough rest finish. So there's a roughing operation followed by a second roughing operation. There's a rest period, and then there's a finish. And I can change that strategy if it suits to just rough and finish. Press apply, close. And here it will tell me that the, um, or at least I, I, um, I should be aware of it. I need to regenerate the operational plan because obviously the strategy has changed. And then generate the tool path again. And you can see the difference here now. We just have one roughing operation followed by the finishing operation the center drilling and the drilling so if i was to simulate this simulate tool pad press play right now my face milling has unfortunately moved back down to the end so i'm just going to bring that back up to the top here
and just check that that's the same in both. Yeah, the face feature. Move that back up to the top. Perfect. Now what we do have left here is to generate the um, the chamfer that's around the uh, the outside of the piece. So again, to do the chamfer, right click on mill part. It's a 2.5 axis feature. And if it's an external chamfer like this, then the what you're looking for is a boss feature. If it's an internal one, then you're looking for pocket. I'm going to select the edge, and that selects everything, the, the four edges across. The end condition, I'm going to go blind. And I need to come down. Sorry, I shouldn't have pressed uh, enter there, but uh, let me just go back into edit. End condition. So I'm going to come down 5 mil, and that just gives my tool like an output clearance on my tool. If I was just to leave that to depth of the chamfer, which is 3 mil, then I wouldn't be able to bring the tool down beyond that, and I wouldn't have any clearance, and that would leave a, a bore edge across the end of the chamfer here. So I've gone down to 5 mil. The finish strategy I'm looking for is a finish, and again, I can accept that. Now I'm going to generate the operational plan. Go to edit definition. And here I want to click on chamfer milling. The angle is 90 degrees. That's fine. Um, actually, what I might do is select the, the, the tool first. So if I go to tool, and click on the tool crib and it can be quite handy here to do a filter so if you click on filter and you want to filter by type so by type countersink press ok and from the library if I press add and here I have a, a library of countersink tools um, and what's really neat is that when you select a tool you can then offer it up over to the um, the piece and you can see how it would match up with it so this 10 millimeter 90 degree or this 12 millimeter 90 degree chamfer or countersink countersinks are quite often used for chamfering uh, that kind of an economical way of using the tool for chamfering and you don't need to buy special chamfering tools but if you haven't that's fine and you can include them in the tool crib uh, so i'm going to go with the 10 millimeter one so number four here press ok select it across the line here press select do you want to replace the corresponding holder course yeah so press yes and now click on the um, countersink so the that's all okay yeah we have that press on contour click on chamfer machining click on length so it's asking for the length of the chamfer now the length of this particular chamfer is three millimeters so three millimeters is the chamfer and the clearance that I will how far down beyond would I like to bring the tool so I'll bring it one mil and then the last option here is apex or outer edge now the apex you would use if you have an edge of a model and the model doesn't actually have a chamfer in it but you would like to put a chamfer in as part of the machining operation then you would use the apex my model actually has the chamfer in it, so therefore I use the outer edge. And that's the outer edge that I selected a little bit earlier. I can press preview here, and it should show me the path. So there's the path. 
and press OK. So again, I'm going to go back to mill powered setup and press the um, simulate toolpath. Press play, so my facing operation, contour milling, rough milling for sorry, and then contour milling, and my chamfer. Except 